Ida of Stocks, April 12, 2020, and Happy Easter to everybody. And Vegas has got some updates for us. In today's watch list, we're going to be looking at ADRO, PSTI, TBLT, which we mentioned last week, Microsoft, Netflix, Amazon, and last but not least, JP Morgan and Miss Vegas. Yeah, well, good morning, everyone, and happy Easter and happy Passover to everybody. Hopefully, you're staying safe and uh, wear a mask if you're going outside. Um, so just a couple coronavirus updates here for the weekend. Uh, definitely seeing, um, obviously, that the New York City Mayor and uh, Chancellor Carranza, they've announced that the New York City schools will be remaining closed for the rest of the year. This is also from um, mentioned by the New York City Governor Cuomo. Uh, he's also mentioned that he believes that they have stabilized the situation upstate and in the suburbs. So that was good information. Uh, we In total, New York has had 783 deaths, uh, which was up from 777 on April 9th. And the other thing, too, is Governor Phil Murphy from New Jersey. He is ordering the New Jersey Transit and all private carriers to cut the capacity on the trains and the buses and the light rails to 50%. So if you're going to ride any of those things, uh, you're going to have to wear a mask. So also, if you're paid, taking any takeout from a restaurant, you must wear a face covering. So they're also saying, you know, if you don't have a mask, wear a scarf, cover your face. Yeah, uh, the other thing too is that uh, you know we've had Boris Johnson's been discharged from the hospital, so that's good news. And uh, the other thing too is that uh, we have OPEC. You know, OPEC's been in the news, and the Allies are set to finalize multinational 10 million barrels per day production cuts is what the sources have mentioned from the Wall Street Journal. So we're just waiting for all that confirmation but that's also in the news with opec so keep a watch on the oil plays as well and one last comment about the coronavirus in russia they're unlikely to lift the coronavirus restrictions by may the 9th as per the deputy prime minister and mayor de blasio says that new york city has plenty of ventilators and supplies to get them through the week so Again, Corona issues are still in play. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're trading some stocks that are connected with Corona. They will move. And then when things calm down, the stocks will pull back. So keep, a, keep that in mind. So we're going to start today with the first one, ADRO, which is Aduro Biotech. Now, Aduro Biotech is a healthcare company. By the way, they are working on a very, diff uh, I think, a lung cancer treatment. Um, but I do want to mention that this is a stock to watch. I do like what I'm seeing here on the weekly chart on ADRO. If you like to trade swing trades, uh, this has a nice setup here. We've got good support over the 50-day. And uh, looks like these uh, Bollinger Bands are widening up, so we could look for some continuation. It did close here at $2.83 on ADRO. And uh, has room here, in my opinion, could go, could break, if it breaks three fifty, could easily see $4. So looks like the sellers are kind of out of here now. And um, looks like it's starting to be accumulated a little bit here. So, Jim, let's hear about ADRO, please, because at one time, this stock was worth a lot more money than what it is today. Oh, yes. And here's the yearly chart. i got a three-year up right now. But here's, oh, my. Your, here's your yearly chart. And we're setting up an ascending triangle last month. So we got that little ascending triangle set up. These trend lines that I have on here go back to 2018. And I do believe I'm still going to be using them because they're pretty, pretty accurate here by looking at this chart. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. Right? Well, let me see if I can draw a few new ones in here. I got one right here. I like that. Kind of spread it out a little bit. And I like that. Let's extend this out because I'm going to have to need that. Turn that back on. 
and I'll we'll just go ahead and hit the OK. Same thing with this one right here. I'll just delete this real fast and put a new one in there. Yeah, I think you're right about there. That's a good spot. So let's pull up the 20 day chart, look at it real fast. Or I'm going to go back to the month and show you what I mean by that ascending triangle. We kind of have this lower high right here. And we're going to put this in right there. Bam. And then straight across. And I'll turn this into a blue line because that's the color I like for my ascendings. And I'll set another one right here on this 2018 trend line. See how it stopped right at that 2018 trend line? And we're into 2020 right now. So these extended trend lines can be pretty accurate if I set them right. And that's a fact. Jack, we're going to put this on the... Right there's going to be another one. So this is how we're going to look at it. Let's pull up the 20 day real fast. We got this trend line for a low support at 250 if it does decide to pull back there. And we do have a resistance that we need to break here at 288. So that first support level is going to be right here at 275. And then we've got another one right here right around the 266 area and the 259. And then that low support either off that trend line there or even down here to this 247 area. But the resistance we need to break is going to be 288. Bring it up to 298, 305, and I'm going to pull up this three-month chart. And then we've got the long resistance here at 314. And then maybe bring it up to right around this area up in here, right around the 334 with a, with a three-month high at 390. And that's ADRO. And the next one we're going to talk about is PSTI. Well, I love this one here in particular because... I talked about this and mentioned it on social media very early before the move happened. Um, you know, PSTI is plural stream and you know, they have all, they've been in the news quite a bit actually. And um, one of the reasons they've done very well, first of all, they're an Israeli company, but um, they were treating Israeli patients with the coronavirus under compassionate use. And uh, what's happened is that they did mention that um, the data from their treatments for the coronavirus with the compassionate use program, they were treating seven patients with acute respiratory failure. And the results of those patients, they were all, by the way, in intensive care. They were on ventilators and they were suffering from what's known as ARDS, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome and 100% survival rate for all seven patients. So what happened is that six of them had a one week follow up. The seventh was treated on April the 5th, but four of the six patients completed uh, showed uh, improvement in the respiratory parameters and th and then the other uh, patients uh, had advanced stages of weaning from the ventilators. So what they're doing is this company Plural Stream, uh, Plural Stem is planning to apply for initiation of multinational clinical trial for the treatment of complications associated with COVID-19. As you can see, this stock has done very well. It has been non-stop action. And you know, one person even asked me on social media after it had a bit of a run-up and said, you know, what are your thoughts on the pullback? And I said, you know what? I think the pullback's still great. I think it's still a good weekly chart. The chart is not broken. When you look at the weekly chart, I mean, PSTI, uh, still looking beautiful. I mean, it has a new 50 week closing high, by the way, volume surge. It had its range contraction. Now it did have, you know, a little bit of a reversal, but the chart is beautiful. And when you see a 52 week closing high and a company that's so involved in what's going on right now, and you know, Jim always talks about being in the now. Well, this is one of those stocks that's in the now because their treatments have been very successful and they've made that application. So Jim, let's hear about PSTI because this has had a beautiful run and I think we're gonna see a lot more from this particular stock. Oh, this yeah. is not over. 
Nope, I agree with you. But we did have a nice little breakout on it on Thursday. She did have a resistance high of 859, so that's very nice. I mean, that's really good. We had a previous breakout on Tuesday, and she pulled back pre-market and after hours and then popped right back up to hit that resistance level that we had on Tuesday at $5. So that's kind of going to be your low support. And then Thursday, we broke out into a pennant flag. As you can see, the flag right here and we had the three white soldiers come in, and that was about all she wanted to do that day, but from $5 all the way up to eight ninety-five, and then you can tell on this big wick candle here that it was gonna pull back, and it did pull back to that nine EMA on the 20 day right here, and we've extended out into a pennant flag with three white soldiers, and three white soldiers is, when you see something like this, this is called three white soldiers. And then we kind of, this here is kind of a negative flag because you had that big white wick there, that big huge wick. And then she went ahead and pulled back to support. So let's go ahead and look at the at the uh, daily, see if I can find anything different. It ran really nice all day long. Then we had an indication of a lower high about midday that was going to pull back. And it did pull back to that support level of 641. So that's going to be probably our, our low support. Then you'll have another one right in here. Let me change this. We'll have another one right about in here. And we'll go ahead and put that in there. And then it looks to me like we'll have another one right in, right about here. Well, it's kind of hard to judge. Let's go with, go with it right here. So we've got a low support at 641. And then we've got the 50% the retracement on that daily is probably where a good correction could be right at 662 and then we got the first support right here at 684 with a resistance to break of 736 and i say that because that's where it ended up after hours with that high there at 736 with a resistance level after that right at 758 and see if we can get it back up here to a hard resistance right around 789 so 641 is going to be your low support with a resistance to break on your third resistance would be right around 789. You, you could take profit there or you could see if we could get back up here to the to that high that we had Thursday. And it was definitely an impressive trade just by the way it pulled back. We had the 50% retracement and when we had that it popped right up off that. And I always say when we have a big breakout like that, count on it pulling back 50% of the run, which it did. And then you can go ahead and set on up for, looks to me like a real nice, getting ready to break out of that resistance of seven, 736 to a high of 789. And then if you can break that, you can bring it up to these new highs. And that's PSTI. The next one we're going to talk about is one we mentioned in the last video. It did pull back to my support level, and then it did have a nice little breakout. And that's TBLT. Yeah, so, you know, TBLT, which is Tough Built Industries, you know, they do all that equipment. You know, they had good news. I mean, first of all, um, they had the very good revenues, by the way, which would increase 25% um, from previously 15.3 million to 19. But the good news is that they announced a distrib agreement with new business from Lowe's, $22 million. That is fantastic. Um, that's more than the revenue they made the whole year. So imagine that. So, um, you know, we do see here that uh, we do have support here at the 50 day, also at the 20 day. We see also, I see a nice pocket pivot here and a little, a nice little volume surge here also on TBLT. If you take a look at that, we had a volume surge. So we did close here at uh, 1679. You know, this here, this actual stock here, I'd love to see it break that 21 cents again and love to see it really break the 28 cents. We also have a little bit of a gap fill as well on the way here. So there is some potential here with this news. The chart is still nice. I still like it as a swing trade. I'm still holding the trade because it hasn't really moved that much. So I'm just waiting and being patient for some more volume to come in here. And, and take it where this really needs to go. So, Jim, what are your thoughts on where you see the next resistance levels on the chart? Yeah, that, that 
that news that it got last week with that big contract was a pretty big deal. It's, it, was, it needed that real bad. We were down here at nine cents on the year with a, with a high up here right around oh, 148. And we were calling this out. I had a bunch of trend lines on here from 2019 when we were playing the pullback, but this pullback was pretty nasty. I don't know why. I mean, this is a good company, but um, and we do have a resistance level up here that right around the 4151 area. If it decides to break on out to go to higher levels, and let's pull up the 20 day and look at it. And it pulled right back to where I said she was going to pull back to. We'll look at the 20 day. We did have a previous breakout on it a couple weeks ago, where it had a high resistance up here right around the 2337 area. And if you look at the Fibonacci's on the 20 day, we have a 50% retracement right there at around 18 cents. It did pull back to that 18 cents and it actually pulled back to this low 13 where we were before this huge breakout. So this is also one that a lot of people will be watching. And a lot of people that I know are watching it. A lot of people that play the low float stocks are watching this one also. So. We, we kind of had a little consolidation area right between this 1674 and 18 cent area and that's the resistance that we need to break. I'm still going to keep this low support down here right around 13 to 15 cents just in case it does pull back. It can be a strong buy, a real strong buy if it gets down to 13. I would put it in your portfolio and hold on to it. But the resistance that we do need to break, like Miss Vegas says, is right up here, right around the 2215 area. If we can break that, we can go to new, newer highs and break that 24 cents and bring it up to 41. And that's where we had that that previous, I mean, that's where the, the high that we had on Thursday. I'm going to go ahead and put that 24 in here. I'll stick it right there in a way. So support level is going to be in this channel between 15 and 16 cents if it does get in there it could be a your second support with your low one down here between the 13 and the 1383 area with a resistance to break at 18 to try to top it off to this 2215 area and if we can bust that that's going to be a hard resistance and if it starts to tape starts to slow down and you're in the trade maybe take profit wait for that pullback back to 18 maybe and then hopefully if we do break that resistance of 22, we can get up to 24 and start building new highs. And that's TBLT. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be one of our favorites. And it's Bill Gates and it's Microsoft. Well, you know, Microsoft, I mean, I just really like the chart. I mean, everyone's been using, you know, Microsoft's been in the news, you know, because they've had day highs on Skype to Skype calling minutes which was apparently a 220% increase. You know, Piper does maintain an overweight rating of a price target of about a 192. You know, the other thing too with Microsoft, they did mention that uh, they're not gonna deliver their Windows 10X devices this calendar year, but nevertheless, Microsoft is still fantastic. I mean, I really like the weekly chart. I'm really liking how the MACD is bullish on the center line cross. It had a beautiful outside day. And, you know, we got support here now at the 50 days. So I'm really liking how Microsoft is shaping up for, you know, a day trade continuation or even a swing trade. So we did close here on Microsoft around 165.14. So I was looking at some options here for Microsoft. Obviously, I don't have a current Microsoft position, but I will be looking for some calls. And so I'm probably going to look for something around maybe the 167.50 level. And those are going for around 240 each. So we'll see how this plays out because of the fact that, you know, we want to see the continuation. And, you know, it closed at 240 for the contracts on Thursday. That doesn't mean that come tomorrow that you're gonna get it for that price. It might be worth more or there could be a pullback. So I'm just saying that that's what the contract's going for as of the close Thursday. I'm also gonna keep an eye on the ones for 180 because those ones are really cheap. They're only 15 cents, which is $15. And if I buy them tomorrow, 
and I can get them even for a better deal or around that price range or a little more, I have the whole week and I'm really liking Microsoft chart weekly. So Jim, what are your thoughts on Microsoft? Yeah, we kind of charted this out and I don't want to erase any of these lines because I'm going to kind of stick to them. I've just freshly charted this up and you can see it's got a lot of trend lines on here and this is the one year we have a 190.70 high with a pullback low support right around the 119 area. So that's definitely the 50% retracement. We've already went way below that at 155. We did have a low down here on my trend line. Well, on my, you know, where I call support at 135. So and that was in a channel for almost five months. And then we had that huge breakout and she pulled right back to that channel on a yearly. So it, it, this is one that, that is a Corona play tube. Just the fact that, you know, the gaming is a spotlight right now for Corona quarantine as it continues. A lot of people, a lot of kids are playing games, even adults. And the Microsoft computers, I mean, the computers are selling like hotcakes right now. And this is just one that will keep up the momentum. So let's go ahead and pull up the 20 day. As, as you look, I've had this charted up on a 20 day. We did have a 50% retracement, which is a solid support at 152.11 to 155.78. And we broke out of that channel last week and created a new high up at 170. And then we started a new channel Wednesday and Thursday, and we're right in the middle of that pivot point at 165.32. So I'm going to call that a pivot point for right now, and I'm going to call this lower channel that I have right here at 160 a solid support. I don't want to see it go below that 160, and I do want to see that first support right here at 163.45 with a resistance to break of 166.55. And then a solid resistance right up here, I'd say probably right around that 169.83 area. I have it at 169.60. But if we can break that 169.60.83, we can bring it up to a new high of 174.06. And that's Microsoft. Keep a good eye on it. It's one of our favorites. And so is Netflix. And it'll be next. So Netflix, as you can see, Jim just mentioned it. Um, you know, everyone's watching Netflix. I mean, you know, you're home, you're bored, especially if you have kids right now at home. Um, you are watch. you're putting either Disney Channel or you're watching Netflix, but a lot of really good movies and programs for children that you can put as well on Netflix. Um, the other thing too is that this stock has been upped to $487 by Bernstein as the street high. I'm really liking that number. I mean, that's an aggressive number. But uh, I will say, in terms of a monthly chart, don't just look at the weekly. Look at the monthly. Netflix is one of the nicest monthly charts out there. It's actually the second best to the one that I'm going to talk about after this. So um, definitely Netflix is one to watch. I will be looking at some options on Netflix tomorrow. Um, I have a whole bunch of different ones in mind right now. I just want to see how the market's going to open. So if you're interested to know what am I going to trade, what, am, what options am I going to consider, please follow and subscribe to our Stock Twits account and to our Twitter account because I will post a Netflix trade idea live tomorrow. So please follow and subscribe if you're interested in watching those. Okay, Jim, over to you on Netflix. All right, Netflix is another cocooning play, one that we talk about quite a bit in the room, and you can see from that pullback we had in the lows of 290, it has bounced up almost $90 in the past 20 days. And we have had higher lows, and she pulled back for the last three days into last week. So I'm thinking it did pull back to my lower support level that I had, and that was right off that 200 day on the EMA on the 20 day one hour chart. So let's go ahead and pull up the, uh, let me see which one looked better. I'll pull up the three minute. There we go. Yeah, look at the three minute here. So we got a low support area of 366 to 367. We got the second support right down here, right around the 369 area. And then that first one's gonna be right here at 370.53. Now the resistance, and we are setting up, you see we have an upper wedge 
into close and it did top off not really topped off to the pre-market highs but it did top off to that other high that we had after uh, midday when the market when it did pull back you know these stocks are, are you just got to kind of watch the trend if you're not in the trade if a trend starts to go down at first thing in the morning just be a little patient with it let it bounce up and then maybe on that second dip that's the time to maybe get in the stock unless it continues on up and you see some kind of pattern that attracts you and I'm you know I'm a guy that likes to look at patterns I like to watch the tape and the money flow that comes into the stock so the resistance that we need to break is 372 and 22 and if we can break that we'll get up here to the new high level up right around 373 and bring it up to 374 low support strong buy at 366 367 second support there at your 369 that first one right around 370.53 with a resistance to break at 372.22 and bring it on up to 374.16 and we can get it up to them other highs that we were looking at earlier and that could it can double double top up here at 383.73 but we do have like a see we had a we had a high here we had a higher high here and we had a higher high there so it, and then we had the lower highs all the way up and she just kind of pulled back last week because oil and the liquidity that was in the news being pumped into the states and into the market took first first stance and kind of but and I think the Miss Vegas was talking about maybe coming to a curve on the coronavirus plays and that could be another reason why this pulled back just a little bit but this is one we do like and that's Netflix and the one we're going to talk about next is everybody knows they should know it by now at least Amazon well I'm saying Amazon is the nicest monthly chart out there and I said it would second to Netflix and you know Amazon's just super busy you know they the thing is that um, Amazon by the way, faced, uh, apparently they were mentioning also last week, I don't know if you guys heard this, that they were facing another New York City warehouse strike because apparently dozens of workers have the coronavirus. Um, and the other thing too is that, you know, Amazon's, you know, they're saying that they're rolling out a whole bunch of masks uh, for the European staff by next week. So people are still ordering, I mean, Whole Foods, um delivery but you know there was some bad news i think last week too that apparently whole food employees were going to have a nationwide sick out but nevertheless people are going online and ordering so amazon you know the director's been purchasing some shares um he's been buying them in little like little spurts here but uh definitely amazon one to watch because it is the nicest monthly chart out there. So let's keep a watch on Amazon and we'll see how that performs this week. It is definitely on my top watch. So Jim, your thoughts on Amazon because that week, that monthly chart's really nice. Yeah, sure is. We do have a 50% retracement down here and it did kind of pull back to that last week. We off that 100 EMA and that 50% retracement was right around 1900. And she went ahead and bounced up throughout the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's set up with a green doji. And that green doji you can see right here where she bounced up off that and created another doji right there and she bounced up off that. And that's impressive when the bases are above that, etc. So let's pull this up. I don't I took all the chart lines out of it. I kind of like how charting this one up because it's kind of fun. We have a low support right here, right around the 2024-93 area, 425, I mean 2025, and we have a lower support down here at 1996, just under two grand, and it could be right about two grand. If you look at it here, we had this previous high right here, and that was right around 2000 and 2002, and I ain't talking about the year. So we pull back to the support level here, maybe at 2011, and we got a resistance that we got to break and that's going to be the base of that candle and I'm going to draw a couple more up here I like that 2078 area 
and I also like this spot right in here and that's where we you see I'm talking about this candle base right here and we did close at that high there at 2051 the close of Thursday's market it was at 2042.76 so let's go ahead and pull up the 20 and see if I missed anything here you see this little wedge we had right here that's called an ascending triangle she decided to go ahead and fail and pull back to that 200 and then all last week she was just positive all the way up we have a curl up coming back up to that high of 2059 and if we can get it past that 59 area we can take to take it to 2079 2078 somewhere in that area with a low support like i said right around that 2000 if it does pull back i mean this thing can pull back 40 bucks easily in a day but with, by looking at these candles it doesn't quite want to do that it'll take baby steps if it does it won't be an engulfing candle unless it gets some real real bad news and i mean there's a lot of employees that work at amazon so it you know the work force right now is probably a little bit grumpy but i think he does very well with his employees i think he takes care of them real well there's 2034 so let's pull up just look at the three minute see if there's anything i missed yeah i see something right here see where we had that high right there um, i got a phone call and i gotta see if i can turn this down give me just one second here So uh, we had a pullback. Okay, let me get my concentration back. We'll go back to the 20 day. So we got a low support, like I said, right around the 2000. And then we've got 2011, 2024, and 2035 with a resistance to break. It's going to be this top here at 2051 to 2059 area. And if we can break past that, We'll get up to this new high of 2078, 2079. And the next one we're going to talk about is JP Morgan. Well, you know what? Earnings is coming up. So you guys can see the earnings calendar. Jim can show it to you there. Uh, busy day starting Tuesday. And we see that JPM's on the list. I have to say, JP Morgan was on fire on Thursday. That had a beautiful, beautiful run on JP Morgan. So you know, they are lending out money. And, you know, the thing is, too, they are the nation's largest lender, just so you know. And the other thing, too, is that they did mention recently that starting Tuesday, the home buyer will need their FICO score, which is your credit score, to be at least 700 and a 20% down payment to qualify for a mortgage. Now, that's going to be really, really, really tightening up the ropes there. So, um, you know, keep, you know, I guess for first time buyers, that's a little bit tough there because sometimes not everyone has 20%. But nevertheless, JPM is reporting this week, and I think the earnings are going to be good. That's just my opinion. We'll really, I guess the bottom line is it doesn't matter what my opinion is, it matters what is the end result. And that's what we're going to see pre market on Tuesday. So JPM, if you look at the chart, it kind of in a new uptrend and a bit of a pocket pivot. And that's kind of what I liked on this chart. Uh, Jim, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this because I'm not in this trade at all. It, you know, it's a, it's a earnings is coming Tuesday. So some people may trade earnings and some people may wait till the earnings are out to decide if they're going to trade this. But if you look at the chart, it is definitely on a new uptrend. So yeah. let's hear your thoughts on JP Morgan. We definitely got some good earnings coming out this week and that could be, and I think it's going to be kind of like the way the unemployment numbers was. I don't think the earnings are going to matter that much to the market itself. The algorithms might hit it a little bit and pull it back a little bit, but we've got some real nice ones coming up. We got, like she said, JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citibank, um, Progressive Insurance, uh, Beth you know, Bed Bath & Beyond, Abbott. Abbott's one of our top Corona plays that we're looking at, along with Guild. And there's just going to be some nice earning plays coming out this week. And so if you all know how to play earnings, it'll be an opportunity to play that, that, that trend. And um, let me pull up the J.P. Morgan chart now. And we have 
double top resistance that we did on a 20 day right here at 102.74. Um, JP Morgan's back in business, so he's, he's, you know, he's at the front lines again. We have a low support right down here under $100. I think that would be consider that a strong buy if we did dip on down that far to that under $100 area, right around $98.44. And we have a resistance to break, and that's going to be this double top on a 20-day right here, right around the um, 103, 104 area, 104, 103.98. We did have a 104.39 high, and it looks like it's setting up to break that resistance and if it does we can take it all the way up to 107.92 but that's going to be your resistance to break is going to be the double top and if you're not familiar on how to play double tops uh, you can google it google it on youtube and and there's great videos out there that tell you how to play them usually on a triple top if it doesn't break for me i usually like to take my money and run but a double top is like a second chance maybe to get for a pullback to support level maybe if it doesn't break it and then try to break up that double top to a triple top and then bring it up to 107.92. That's JP Morgan with a low support under $100 right around 98.44 with a resistance to break at 103.98. I'll just call it even at 104 and that's the 100% retracement on a 20 day chart. And that's it for I Love Stocks. Always remember, subscribe, ring that bell, hit that like button. One on the right here, if you go to our website, you can always follow the Twitter, the Stock Twits, the Pinterest, the YouTube. We do have a store. And also, if you are interested in joining the chat for a free week, week trial, we do have the pricing and the instructions on how to set it up right here. And you need to download Discord channel if you don't already have one. And we wish everybody a great trading week and earnings next week. And Miss Vegas, do you have anything else you'd like to say? Well, you know, I just want to say, I mean, obviously, like if you're home right now and you're not working, um, even if you're new to trading, now's a great time. I mean, you're home. Come to the room. Come listen. Come learn. There's no better time than now. And uh, I really think that uh, if you have a small account, options is the way to go. And I wish someone would have taught me that years ago, but uh, we saw this week, you know, we had an option trade on the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, from $16 went to over $400 for one. So, I mean, you can make money if you even want to just come and learn. It's a great, great time to do that. You know, I mean, if you're not working and you're not allowed to work from home um, because your job, you know, is, you know, your job, you can't do that kind of work at home then you know you can definitely come participate and listen uh jim explains the charts in detail throughout the day so it's a good time to learn in real time that's the that's really really helpful so i hope you guys all stay safe have a very nice easter nice passover and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow have a great week all right this is i love stocks and we wish everybody a good week Thank you.